In this video lesson, we will learn how to factor quadratic functions. So what do I mean by factoring? Well, I'll explain this in just a moment. So what you should already know is what foiling is. It's when you multiply out expressions that I'll, I'll show some examples of. It's, it's just a method of multiplication, essentially. So you could be multiplying, for example, x minus 1 times x plus 1, or 2x minus 3 times x plus 5. Anything that looks kind of like that, you can use FOIL and you can multiply it out, and you'll end up with a quadratic function. Now factoring is actually just the reverse of FOILing. You start out with a quadratic function in standard form, and you factor it into one thing multiplied times another that you can then FOIL back. So for example, x squared minus 2x plus 1 can be factored, and it's going to be x and something times x and something else. And to make our work easier, I'm going to label this as x plus a times x plus b. Now when we're factoring, there's just one rule that you have to know, one trick. And this trick is that you're just finding out what a and b are. And the trick is that a plus b equals to this negative 2 in this case, and a times b equals to positive 1 in this case. So you just look at the equation, you have a negative 2x, so the sum is negative 2, and you have plus 1 at the end, so the product a times b is equal to 1. So in this case, we're just going to check, well, what times what equals 1? 1 times 1 equals 1, but 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, and that's wrong. Or we can have negative 1 times negative 1 equals 1, and negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2, which is right. So we can say a equals negative 1, and b equals negative 1. And that's just what we want. We just plug it in now, and we get x minus 1 times x minus 1. There, we factored it. So now we can FOIL this back out and just make sure that our answer is right. So we have x and x is x squared. Let me write this a little bit cleaner. And this too. So x squared and then minus x, minus another x, and negative 1 times negative 1 is, it's going to be plus 1. And now notice we have the sum, minus 1 plus minus 1 is negative 2, negative 2x, and the product is positive 1. So that's where that comes from. But you don't really have to worry about that. You just apply the rule every time, and it'll work. So say you have an example like x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals something. We're going to factor it. So as before, we're going to have x plus a times x plus b, because we know that there are going to be some sort of numbers there. And the rule is, we have a 5 there, so a plus b equals 5. And we have a 6 as the constant, so a times b equals 6. Well, how can we factor 6? There's a few options, really. 2 times 3, 6 times 1. You can also have negative 2 times negative 3, because the negative signs will cancel. Or you can have, even have negative 6 times negative 1. But only one of these is actually going to work, because we need the sum of these two multiples to equal to 5. And that's 2 times 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 plus 3 is 5. So we know that a equals 2 and b equals 3. And again, I highlight 2 times 3 is 6. 2 plus 3 is 5. So obviously, those are the a and b that we want. So now that we know what, what our a and b's are, 
a equals 2, b equals 3, we can plug them back into the equation. x plus 3 times x plus 3. So now we can just make sure by foiling out this expression and see if it equals what we started with. So if we FOIL, we get an x squared plus a 3x plus a 2x plus 2 times 3. And see again, we have 2 times 3 and 2 plus 3. That's where the rule comes from. We get the 3x plus the 2x is going to equal the 5, and the 2 times 3 is just 6. So when we simplify this, we get x squared plus 5x plus 6, which is what we started with. So what we did was correct. So now we move on to the final example. x squared minus 2x minus 3. And since we're factoring it, it's going to be equal to x plus a times x plus b. And I'm writing these question marks because really it's just some sort of unknowns. But we're going to relabel them as a and b so that we can keep track of them more easily. So we have our a and b here, and all we need to do is find them using our rule. The rule is that a plus b equals negative 2, and a times b equals negative 3. So we look at what two numbers multiplied equal negative 3. We can have negative 1 times 3, or we can have 1 times negative 3. So now we just check the sums. For this option, the sum would be negative 1 plus 3, which equals to 2. But we want negative 2. So for the op other option, we get 1 minus 3 equals negative 2. So this option must be the correct one, since negative 2 is what we wanted for the sum. So now we know what a and b are. They're going to be 1 and negative 3. a equals 1, b equals negative 3. And now we can just replace them in the formula, and we'll have the factored equation, the factored function. x plus 1 times x minus 3. And again, we can FOIL this out and just make sure that all our work was right, and we'll get the same equation as we started with. So x plus 1 times x minus 3 equals, and we'll get the x squared, of course, minus 3x plus 1x, and then plus 1 times negative 3, which will just be negative 3. So when we simplify this, of course, negative 3x plus 1x combines to negative 2x, so we have an x squared minus 2x, and then negative 3, because 1 times negative 3. So it's right. Thank you for watching this video lecture. I hope it helped.